Welcome back to the third video in the data governance interview question series. Please stand till the end as some of these questions might seem challenging, but don't worry, I'll teach you on how to deliver a great answer for each one of them. And I'll give you examples. I'm George Ferrican, your helpful data guy. I publish at least one video each week where I dive into the topics of data governance, data quality, data management, and a bunch of other data topics. So please subscribe. Let's dive right in. Let's put on my glasses, pretending I'm the interviewer. Can you describe a situation in which you had to address a data governance issue? Sorry, I don't know what that voice and accent was. So there are many, many examples to choose from, but I recommend exemplifying something like a data quality or a data compliance problem that was identified and then how it was resolved. Now, you don't need to provide a very technical answer. In fact, make it relevant to the business because most likely you will have somebody on the business side interviewing you as well. And that person will have a large way on the decision to get you hired or not. Okay, here's an example. Let's pick a customer data quality issue because this will most likely apply to a lot of organizations that you're interviewing with or you would interview with. So let's say that there was a data inconsistency and incompleteness uh, with the customer email. For example, customer emails are entered by the sales representative and could end up being incomplete or have an inconsistent format. The result, well, a lack of communication with the customer, missed sales opportunities, and a decrease in customer satisfaction. So how did you fix this issue? Well, you've identified all the systems and the methods that would capture this information. You created a set of rules and validation checks that must be passed before the customer information is entered into your systems. You've provided training to sales representatives and taught them why this is important. This is critical. They need to care. It's not just another direction that you're giving them. They need to understand why this is important. You've then built a data validation process to check for and correct inaccurate customer email. Of course, with the help of IT, you know, not just you single-handedly did this. You've assigned data stewards for continuous monitoring and created a process to obtain invalid or missing emails. That's what you did. Also talk about the result. Yes, talk about the outcomes of your actions, such as email completeness rate was up by 20%, bounce rate dropped, uh, sale conversions increased by 10%, and there were you know, less complaints from customers about this being an issue. Done, that's it, you've nailed this question. Let's move on to the next one. How do you ensure data quality? <sighs> yes, data governance and data quality are not the same thing, but they're closely intertwined. And as a result, don't be surprised if this comes up as a question. And this is a loaded question, but don't worry. Okay, here's how you can answer it. <clears throat> Data quality, like data governance, requires continuous investment in order to achieve sustainable results and not band-aid solutions. And as such, there are three main steps to undertake every time. First, you analyze and identify the issue. You know, its root cause, the business impact, and potential solutions. Second step, you fix and prevent the data quality issue by having the necessary standards, processes, and procedures in place while preventing it from you know, happening again through data validation and monitoring and training. Lastly, step three is communication. And this communication, this would occur throughout the duration of the first two steps. And it covers what is being done, what was done, what will be done, and why. Tie it back to the why. If you'd like to learn more about this framework, check out my article on the data quality trifecta but I recommend not going into a lot of detail unless you're asked for it or you're asking for it, such as, would you like me to go into more detail? Otherwise, I think the interviewers might just, you know, phase out and not care and not remember and just kind of think, okay, this is a lot of talking. Let's move on to the next question. How do you handle data archiving and retention? This question came up a few times on Glassdoor and in LinkedIn groups, so that's why I've included it in here. I recommend giving an example on how prior to handling this, you need to have defined the groupings of data classification. And you can watch my video on data classification on that topic if you'd like to learn more, it'll be somewhere here, I think. But once that's in place, 
each piece of your data, structured or unstructured, can be then classified according to those groupings for which you can apply bulk rules related to the appropriate length of time of retention, processes for archiving and retrieval, and the different compliance considerations you know, with the relevant regulations. Here, try and make it relevant to that organization that's interviewing you by providing some examples of those regulations that, again, are relevant to that industry, to the organization. I have another question for you. How do you stay current with data governance best practices and industry trends? You know, you can mention attending conferences or workshops, reading industry publications, or participating in online communities or professional organizations like DEMA International. You can also highlight any certifications or training you completed related to data governance, of course. And for that, you can mention the Light Zone Data courses that you completed. Hopefully, by now, you've taken at least one course. Have you? How do you measure the effectiveness of your data governance program? I don't know why I have my arms crossed. I don't know, maybe they'll, they'll probably have you know, open hands towards you, inviting you. How do you measure the effectiveness of your data governance program? So mention there are two types of metrics that you're tracking. Progress metrics that track the status of the program and impact metrics that measure the value that data governance provides. And you know that will be done in close partnership with the stakeholders that it services. You can also mention any specific tools or technologies that are used to track and measure the effectiveness of the data governance program. But again, don't go into a lot of detail there. There's definitely a lot more to this. You can check out my course on practical data governance implementation. So yes, check that out now on lightsondata.com or follow me on LinkedIn as I post a lot of free stuff there as well. Okay, I hope these questions and answers will help you out. Now, watch the next video, which is on the questions that you should ask the interviewer to impress them. And you're golden. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, and please subscribe. Let's keep putting lights on data. See you next time.